Coach, quick thoughts before we go to the, to the field? Yeah, good evening. Um, I think today was always going to be the result would be secondary, right? So we're, we're fighting with the emotions of 70 years of history uh, and bringing the, the MLS to St. Louis. Uh, you know, we're honoring the life of Anton um, and paying respect to him at the same time. Um, and we knew coming up against a Charlotte team that was very gritty, uh, very, very aggressive, very athletic, have some difference makers in their team. We knew this was going to be a very, very difficult challenge. Um, and as the story so runs and, and unfolds, we go a goal down. We earn the right to get back in the game. We force an own goal. Um, and then we start getting a grip. And I thought, fantastic second half performance. So very proud of the boys. Um, and, and just love to now be part of the celebrations in St. Louis. Bradley, did it seem like the team did a good job of controlling its emotions on a game like this and coming out and playing the game? I think understandably so. You could feel a couple of edgy touches, a couple of nervy moments early on, uh, which is totally understandable. It's totally normal. I mean, I knew what I was feeling. Um, <laughs> And, and the players have to go out and perform, right, like robots. So uh, we knew it could be a chippy start, and it was. We get a handle of the game, then we go down. We have to deal with that and the emotions of that, right, playing at home, first time. So there's a lot of uh, emotions going on. But at the halftime, we, we managed to change a few things. Um, and I think second half was a fantastic performance. Go to Manuel, Julian, then Tom. Hey, Manuel. Hey, how's it going? Hi, can you? First of all, congrats. Um, that was, when you look at that performance, that high press, I don't want to use the term game pressing, but th that's pretty much how you would define it. Is that sort of the style that you're looking for, to force these turnovers to keep the opponent always yeah. on the toes? I thought, I thought the game pressing wasn't very on today. I thought the pressing was good, but when we lost the ball, I thought our game pressing was no, not very good at all. So moments to, to fix there for sure. I would like a little bit more uh, on the first turnover to be a little bit more aggressive against the ball. But credit to the boys, the recovery runs, the, the, the willingness to get back in the game, to get our control, get the shape. And then we press again and had many great moments. So I thought the pressing was fantastic. I thought the gig and pressing just OK. So it was, sorry, it was, I guess it's more because you say pressing versus gig pressing, right? I guess it's really forcing those turnovers. Sure, to I mean, and I think you could see that on full display tonight in certain moments, right? So it was just wave after wave after wave and relentless. So um, I would like us to, you know, can we be a little bit more clinical? Can we be a little bit more penetrating in the final third? I think there's a lot of things to look at. Um, but for the first and foremost, I said it in the opening statement, tonight was not about the result, right? Tonight was about the celebration of the city and, and uh, what it means to the people uh, to bring soccer to this town. It's a very taxing style. Is this something that you want to keep going for all 34 games? Well, we want to embrace the, the, the mindset uh, of the St. Louisan. We want to embrace the culture of the community, right? And uh, Lutz is here for a reason, and I think I'm here for a reason. And the players are bought into it. The players know exactly uh, when we do do it, we, we can really compete on the day. And when we don't, you know, we could just be very ordinary on the day. So we have to really stay true to who we are and what we believe in and what we stand for. Uh, coach, both the goals in Austin you conceded right, came as a result of them exposing the half spaces in between your defense. And the goal today from Charlotte came from Copetti, finding that space in between Parker and Nerwinski. Are you concerned that the three goals you've conceded so far have come in a similar way? And how do you plan on fixing that? I don't think uh, they came in a similar way. I think the Copetti one is more central, right? So uh, we knew that they got off 37 crosses last time out uh, in week one, which is the most in the MLS on the opening weekend. So we knew it was one of our to-do lists, uh, block crosses and close down space. So yeah, unfortunately, we, we don't get out to block the cross. And uh, Copetti, you know, they have three DPs in their team. So Copetti, you know, he's a really good player. He's a very uh, feisty character, and uh, he's very good in the air, despite his, his size, right? So, I mean, he, he makes himself felt in the challenges, and uh, you can see why, why they have him up front there. So he works hard, and, and he can finish as well. So, yeah, we just got caught a little bit off the shoulder, um, but we knew how dangerous they were with their crossing game. And then a couple of days ago in the preview conference, you talked about your high standards and how you want to hold this group to the highest standards possible. Are you worried at all that you haven't been able to keep a clean sheet so far this season? Um, no, I mean, the standards, the boys set themselves, right? So 
they, they want to, if we, if we score more than the opponent, all right, and get three points on, a, on an emotional day like this, and to go down the way we did, and then to come back, I think that's secondary, right? So uh, I think we only give away two shots on target, if I'm not mistaken. So for us, we want to make sure that, yes, 100%, you know, uh, we want to defend from the front, which helps us defending at the back, right? So if there's starting to be gaps to appear, if there's moments of fatigue, you know, we have to find new orientation and new pickup points, um, and then we go from there. But I just think uh, you can see the, the willingness of the group to work, the willingness of the group to commit to each other, um, and we can see the outcome. So right now, um, yes, if over 10 games, if we still don't have a clean sheet, we'll look at it. Uh, but if we have 30 points on the board, you know, after 10 games, we're not going to say anything either. Coach, I want to ask you about noise. Can you compare about this? About who? Noise. The, the, noise, the yeah. Noise this in was incredible. Stadium. Yeah. Have you played in other games that you can compare that to? I mean, I can't really reflect back into my career. That was too long ago. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you just think of the piercing sound, you know. Against Leverkusen, um, it was... It was very quiet on a cold, chilly night with 20 degrees, right? And you were wondering how it would come out tonight. But last night, the party started, and the fans brought it today. And I uh, said to the players, I said to the staff, this has been incredible, you know. So a big thank you to the fans. Um, this was something that you can compare to, to Europe, right? So, um, yeah, I think we've set the bar really high. There's not too many stadiums uh, with this atmosphere, I can tell you that now. Greg. The, the play of your, your goalie, your captain, uh, St. Louis loves their, their captains. And I'm wondering how, if you reflect on, on how he performed tonight and, and uh, if you, what, kind of what you saw from, from him in those moments that, you know, the, the, the wagging of the fingers and, and <laughs> that kind of stuff. Yeah, listen, I mean, Roman plays with an edge. He's a proud character and he's a proud person. He was, we, they challenged us early on on a couple of set pieces. You can see them you know, dropping down in the small box and really making life uh, difficult for Roman. But he's as calm as a cucumber, cool as a cucumber. You know? So he takes everything in his stride and he has a really good anticipation of the next moment. right? And uh, that's what stood him by a very illustrious and successful career. So just the calmness and the confidence he exudes helps us, helps Tim, helps Kyle, helps Johnny, helps Jake. You know, just gives us a sense of calm and a sense of poise. And when we need to go quick, he'll do that too. So, you know, we, we, we have a very, uh, I think we're very fortunate to have Roman in our ranks. And uh, here in the city of St. Louis, we can all benefit from him and his standards every single day. Bradley, how important was getting Blom in there from minute one and just being able to execute your scheme to the highest level? Yeah, I think Blom plays a lot with... A lot on his shoulders, right? I think uh, I need to tone down the expectations a little bit, right? If you've seen the, uh, the type of press and the media hype from back home in South Africa, um, there's a lot lying on his shoulders, right? So now just think about the guys we had many months ago integrating with the team. Um, he's just arrived and he's playing catch up in terms of what we're trying to do. Um, but he does a lot of things instinct instinctively. And, and how we want to operate, right? So, and I think you saw that many, many moments in the second half. So, you know, I think uh, throw Blom into the deep end at the age of just 23. Um, he's a big asset to us, um, but we want to bring him on, uh, bring him along in the right possible way, right? Without the demands and the expectations. And we have a lot of leeway for a lot of guys. And uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, I think there's other guys that around him, if you think of Edu Leuven, I mean, man, what a performance, back-to-back -back games now. You can see the type of character he's a bit of a baller, you know. Um, definitely, you know, you, you put him against the wall and he'll get out there, he'll come out swinging. So, you know, we've challenged him in many ways um, against the ball as well. Um, and he's responded every time on game day to those challenges. So, yeah, I think uh, credit to the whole team, though. They were magnificent. Uh, Coach, I, I want to ask you first, um, you're wearing the Anton Wax pin. Can you talk about how this tragedy has, uh, has affected your boys, your club, and um, what it means to you and the soccer community. Yeah, it, it, it Im impacted us pretty closely, right? We were meant to play Charlotte uh, two days, I think two or three days before uh, Anton passed. Um, the next morning we got notified um, and uh, we were told, obviously our scrimmage, uh, understandably so, would be canceled, right? So from the very beginning, we felt a part of this. I think the league has felt a part of it um, and we're all in mourning, right? So um, we knew that obviously Charlotte playing 
in the way they do and the way they did. They carrying that every single day with them. Um, and I think it's just, you know, I said it in my opening statement, right? This game is much more than just a result. Uh, first and foremost, this game was for Anton and uh, the people of St. Louis. So um, in that we came out victors on the day, um, not expected. Uh, just in terms of the whole process, I mean, we're truly happy. We'll take the three points, um, but there was many more messages than, than the result today. And then after the first two games, you know, a, a lot's been said about um, the Bundesliga influence on uh, City. Uh, can you talk about how whether or not that has contributed to the chemistry of the squad and uh, what you see from that s style of play and how they've done so far? Yeah, listen, I mean, I think we have a, a very good blend of different characters in the team, different qualities, right? And different age groups. So everyone brings something to the table, whether it's a little bit of experience, whether it's a little bit of uh, quality, whether it's a little bit of knowing the league. So, you know, we, 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 we don't say one is better than the other or one, but I think it's a perfect mix uh, of all these culmination of what we believe in, what we stand for, what the philosophy needs and what our principles require on the day to be successful. So after two games, we have a good snapshot of, of where we want to go and where we want to be. And, uh, you know, I think uh, we have a good blend uh, of guys with MLS experience. This for me is first and paramount, right? MLS experience. Um, a lot of guys during preseason from Europe were, were talking about just the travel and, and just the time zones. And, you know, just thinking about the intensity levels we train at. Some of the guys were wanting two sessions a day. But because of the, we intense, how intense we trained, you know, um, this became obviously apparent and aware to the guys that they didn't need two sessions. If they commit to what they are doing and trust the process, then we can get everything sorted out with, with the way we're trying to periodize this group. So we've seen many good things through this preseason and the first two games. Coach, uh, how happy are you to get this one finally done? I know obviously it's a big anticipated game, but how happy are you that you finally got through with it? Yeah, um, I, was, I was happy last week <laughs> to get that off our shoulders, you know. Um, last week was very emotional. This week was, was almost a joy, a celebration, right? So um, I think to go through uh, the way we did, um, and it's funny how three days after a game where, you know, expectations were one way, and now expectations are totally opposite, right? So I think that's the beauty of success. Um, and, and we need to take that on our shoulders and, and embrace it, challenge ourselves to, to step up um, again, because the road doesn't get easier from here. We know next week, uh, Portland, right? Uh, a very, very tough opponent away from home. Um, so we'll reflect tonight. Uh, we'll have training tomorrow and we'll give the guys off on Monday and we'll go again. You said the word expectations. I want to know, obviously for expansion, sometimes it's <coughs> It's hard to judge what those expectations are. Uh, six points, six goals, two games, two wins. What, is, what, are your, what are your thoughts on these expectations? Have they exceeded what you guys have thought about? I told the group the standards they set and they want to set, they, they, they drive the standards themselves, right? So I, I might create and deliver a platform for them, but it's them to execute, but it's their journey, right? So I'm always accompanying them on their journey. Um, and for me, uh, I mean, I don't, know, I don't know where I read it or heard it. You know, some people doubted us for four games over 34, four victories, you know. So at least we're halfway there and we'll take it. Once we get to four, we'll reassess. Coach, I wanted to ask you a little bit about Jao Klaus. Obviously, he gets an important goal tonight, important goal in the first game. He does much more than just score, but how important is he that he has hit the ground running so quickly? For well, the team? he's a very lovable guy, right? Um, I think... Culturally, he embraces what we're trying to do. I think tactically, he understands exactly how we can reward him. And I think the quality levels that he shows in the moment, I think is, is something that is very unique to this league, right? He has a, he has a knack of scoring goals wherever he's gone on his journeys. Um, and we're just proud to give this place of St. Louis that he can call home. And that was the only thing he ever longed for. Uh, the day I met him, he said, I want to call this my home. I'm, I'm tired of going on alone, coach. I said, okay, we'll get you. This is your home. And so it's been a, it's been a great story for him. And uh, it's us, uh, up to us to continue to tirelessly, tirelessly work for him, to reward him and get him the ball in certain spots because he knows best how to score goals. Well, speaking of, of of Klaus on the on the on the own goal, I mean he's he's in that. But 
between him and Lubin? I mean, it's like involved in almost in all sorts of things throughout the game. <coughs> yeah, I think, I mean, playing with two strikers in the first half helped us tremendously trying to put pressure on the back line. Okay, so Joe Keeney had a really good game, in my opinion. Um, emptied the tank, worked hard for the group, and, uh, uh, you know, committed both sides of the ball. It worked tirelessly. And then we start making a few tactical switches. You know, Leuven can play a 10, Leuven can play the six. He, you know, he's suited to the eight. So, um, you know, when we have the ball, we know we can try and get him the ball and he becomes the eight slash 10 now and, and get up the field. So, um, and then Blom becomes, an, uh, you know, a big moment for him because then he gives the balance to, to Leuven. So I think there's little pieces of this puzzle that we know we're still far from finished and far from polished, um, but we can see with a couple of tweaks where this can start moving us to. Have you been working on the back pass from the opposing team play in, in practice? Yeah, I think, I mean, again, opponents like to reset the game to get their rotations organized and set, right? The minute you take that away, you take away their game plan and the game model. So, um, yeah, we just uh, have a knack of standing in the right place. I'll call it that. Coach, thank you for your time. We appreciate it. Thank, thank you very much. Have a good evening. Congratulations.